Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I want to demonstrate a really powerful function within the Content Center called Replace the Family Template. So this is a really powerful tool if you need to make changes either to model geometry or in the example I'm going to share today, we need to add a custom eye property so that we can control um, <clears throat> some more of the metadata behind the scenes, uh, in this case material code. And also somebody had asked me in the past if there was a way to change the distance for some of the structural members to be measured in feet and inches versus decimal inches. So we're going to cover all of that today using a structural tube. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my content center editor and you must have a custom library. So I'm assuming people know how to create that. I'm not going to go through that, but I'm going to find my structural shapes. And I'm just going to grab a square tube. I'm going to do the ANSI square tube, right click. Now, normally I would do a copy to because I want to maintain the link, but because I'm going to actually be modifying the family template, I do not want to have it linked because if the original changes, it could goof up some of the modifications I make. So it's going to be one of those rare times where I do a save copy as. I'm going to save it to my library. I want it to be independent, and then because I'm using this as a part of my AU class this year, I'm going to name it the 2020 deal. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. <clears throat> That'll grind away for a moment, and now there's my independent family. So I'll go ahead and place a member from that family. So <clears throat> grab the place from Content Center, grab my ANSI square. And I can just use the original one. Let's do a 12 inch length. I hit OK. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I hit OK, I almost got myself there. I want this to be custom. I could save it as standard, but then if I saved it as standard, I would have to create a second project or do some read only switching to be able to edit it. So I'm just going to save myself the hassle, save it as a custom part. And then I'll just save it here. <clears throat> and then there's a, a copy of my component. So this is a 12 inch. Uh, no, I'm not going to worry about vault. So there is my 12 inch member. And <clears throat> what we're going to do is modify this. So I'm just going to straight up open it. And there are two changes that I want to make to this file. The first one is relatively easy, but I had somebody ask me, is it possible to add a custom eye property to handle material code? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very creatively for our Friday, <laughs> create one called material code and add it. So it's a text eye property. And what we can do is modify that once we get it into the family table. Now, the next thing that they, uh, another customer had asked me once was, can we modify the length so that it displays in fractional feet and inches. And so I want to give a shout out to my colleague, Dan Hunsucker. He's the one that actually showed me how to do this once upon a time. So again, forever indebted to Dan Hunsucker. He's awesome, super smart guy. You should follow him on all sorts of uh, technical topics. But the length is being reported by this parameter called G underscore L. So if I right click on it, you do have the opportunity to do a custom property format. And this is where we could change it to feet, but we say fractional feet. And then you can, of course, set a precision. I'll just use a 16th of an inch, hit OK. So now that's been reformatted. We hit Done. And sometimes you even see that take effect in the eye properties, where now this is reporting one foot instead of 12 inches. So that's it. Go ahead and save and close this guy. And that was the first part. Now the next bit is just going into the, <clears throat> the content center editor so that we can change this template. So if you right click here, ah, man, you don't see the replace family template. It's because you always have to be in that particular custom library. Now we can right click on this, replace the family template going to navigate to the one I just saved. 
and after a few moments it will be successful. So now we can come in here, we'll edit the family table, and I'm going to make a couple changes. Of course we could spend all kinds of time in here, but what I want to do is I want to create a new column first because I want the material code to be a part of my part number. So I can right click on the part number heading, add a column, and again, super creative on a Friday, I'm going to call this material code. And two things, number one, all of these are mild steel. So I'm going to pretend that my expression code for this is STL for steel. And then the map to inventor property, because we published this from replacing the family template, we now have access to that custom material code. So that way, whenever we place a component, it will take the value from the family table and place it in that I property. So that's cool, we hit okay. Now it's all steel, but if we had other materials or we wanted to do other things, we could use Excel, we could do, you know, we can manually key stuff in, but it's steel, it's easy, I'm gonna leave it. So the other thing that we can do is if we right click on the part number, we can edit the column properties and we'll get rid of this copy of nonsense. And this is where we can make a couple of changes. So I'm gonna kinda leave everything. I mean, I normally don't like this stuff. So, I mean, I would use underscores. I guess I will do it. So I won't waste tons of time, but I like to put underscores in. Um, and I could clean up this code, but I'll, you know, I'm not gonna worry about it. But what I want to do is I'm gonna get rid of the BL and I'll explain why in a second. And I'm gonna enter in that material code. So I can just grab the symbol here, find material code, do another ampersand. Oop. Another ampersand. And then we're gonna do this. So if you use the carrots and you do that G, whoops, G underscore L, it will actually access that parameter and use that. But if you decide to use a parameter like this, you do have to throw an equal sign at the front of the string. Otherwise it may not compute properly. It'll just be this as text. We're now telling it to treat this as like a function formula. Go ahead and hit okay. It's going to look a little bit strange because it doesn't actually show the G underscore L, but have confidence, it does actually work. So I hit okay. That'll publish the changes. We can hit done. And then let's go ahead and place, uh, well, actually we could refresh it. No, we can't, this is a custom one. So I'll just delete the custom one. And let's place an actual standard version now. And I'll do a different size even. And let's say 15 and we hit okay. We'll leave it as standard this time. No. Go ahead and place that, hit okay. And then let's take a look at what we have. So if we look at the I properties, if we look at the project, notice it's using one foot three inches. It's using the STL and it's published STL to the custom I property. So that's how you can use the replace family template to add some of that metadata. We could have changed the geometry if we needed to as well. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments, let me know and have a blessed day.